just as a warning, this video is going to look slightly different from the other ones because I had to get a new hard drive and I haven't transferred all the stuff over from my old one yet and I need to get this video out. So, sorry if it just looks jarring. Anyway, the video. Hey there, party people. It's been quite a bit since I made a what if video. And honestly, this could constitute as a creating my own fan servant video. But to be very honest, I wanted to be a bit more nebulous with this character or characters. This idea was actually inspired by a subscriber who messaged me on Twitter, currently known as X. And Bear offered a suggestion for a new fan servant video being Winnie the Pooh, seeing as the character is now public domain. The only stipulation was that I don't do this. A fair request, and honestly, my brain started whirling with possibilities. I truly found the idea interesting, and I've never had a furry character before, so it'd be a slightly new venture for me. I knew I wanted them to be a more conceptual servant, similar to Nursery Rhyme. And that actually spawned two different servants, one being an actual Winnie the Pooh servant, and one being a nursery rhyme altar that has a Pooh Bear aesthetic. As always, a big thank you to the artists. Be sure to check out their links in the description below. Now first, let's cover the actual Winnie the Pooh servant, but do be sure to stick around until the end, cause there's going to be something very special. Without further ado, here is the caster servant, Winnie the Pooh, art by Furukaril. I think that's how you pronounce that. So yeah, when I first received the request to come up with this servant, the only thing that came to my mind for the aesthetic was Buff Druid. And that is exactly what I myself requested of the artist, and they delivered better than I could have ever hoped for. I am honestly tempted to use him as a D&D &D character. As a servant, he ultimately would have a similar role to Nursery Rhyme, being a heroic spirit that is a guardian to children, but with the added role of protecting forest animals. Perhaps it would even be best to make him a counter guardian to give him a distinction, though that may be too cruel of a position for being what is meant to protect children and woodland critters. Ultimately, he is a spirit that protects that which is innocent, animals and humans that are too young to know right from wrong. Unlike Nursery Rhyme, he isn't a guide, however. He is strictly a protector, and as he is based off of a specific character, his manifestation is much more static. Likely he has other influences, such as various bear spirits from various mythologies which could make him more of an alter ego instead of a caster. Again, this is more of a nebulous video. I didn't flesh out any skills or abilities, but he'd largely be support, being a tank himself and giving buffs to allies with the animal or child trait. Though I think his noble phantasm would be offensive. It would definitely be called 100 Acre Wood, and in order to protect others, he would go on the attack on the rare occasion and dish out some brutal debuffs as well. Overall, I am very interested in this character concept, and it's something that I would love to see fully fleshed out in Fake Grand Order. But what do you think about Winnie the Pooh? Leave a comment down below and let me know. And if you are enjoying this video so far, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more. Though you will be getting more right now, because it's time to discuss the other servant in this video, my Nursery Rhyme Alter. And here she is, drawn by Glitter DeGena, which, again, I hope I am pronouncing correctly. As stated before, the Winnie the Pooh inspiration is really only aesthetic. The actual character and concept sort of spun away from that. Much like the nursery rhyme we know and love, she is based on storybook tales from all over. Her form and demeanor are in flux, dependent on her master. However, this altar has a slightly more focused origin point. She is specifically based on the villains of fairy tales, and ultimately the children that need to learn a lesson from those morals that are told. This causes her to lean towards being bratty and a troublemaker no matter what. She is the monster that lurks under the bed, the big bad wolf stalking the forest, and the evil witch in her tower. 
all while also being the young girl that doesn't listen to her guardians, and the children that plays pranks to hurt others for fun. Overall, she can be a powerful servant, but is quite the handful to deal with. However, her true strength lies beyond all of that. As I said, she is the villain. It's the role she plays in order to guide and better children with the lessons that are taught. And what is the greatest villain to any story? The ending. The closing of the curtain of fantasy that brings back harsh reality. But it's also the end of a cold winter that brings the beginning of a warm spring. The journey was reaching its climax. The great big Jabberwocky bore down upon the servants defending their master, an impossible beast of pure fantasy and wonder. They were unable to hold it back for long. But from the back, one small servant stood back with her master, watching. Throughout the journey, she had been more than a handful, helpful only when it suited her or she got her way. The perfect spoiled little brat that caused more trouble than she was worth, no matter how many times trouble came back to bite her. But now, seeing that this story only had a few pages left, she was beginning to understand. Even though she was such a nuisance, people were still protecting her. Even though she was just having fun, her heart felt heavy seeing those around her upset. She was beginning to learn her purpose. She stepped forward, looking to the kind master as she spoke. I told you before, right master? I represent all the creatures you see in storybooks. From the friendly woodland creatures to the beasts that lurk in the shadows. But I'm something else too. Do you know it? I'm the bad guy in all the fables and fairy tales. Or I suppose it would be better to say that I'm the lesson that children need to learn so that they can stay good boys and girls. She looked back to the master, tears in the corners of her eyes. And that means I'm the biggest, scariest lesson of them all, too. That all things have an ending. And I just learned that this is mine. The small girl looked back at the Jabberwocky. I am Nursery Rhyme, hero and protector of children. Yet as I am now, I'm the one thing I can't protect them from. All things have an ending. Stories, relationships, lives, days. Even who you are today must end, so that the you tomorrow can begin. It's a good thing. Even if it's sad and hurts. It's good for things to end so that new things can begin. So, why is it so scary? The little redhead tugged her hood over her eyes as she stood trembling. She wanted to not see anything, not hear anything, ignore everything. But then she felt someone beside her. She looked up to her master, looking at her with the same gentle smile that she always saw. Nursery Rhyme took a deep breath and held up her hand to her dear master. Master, could you please hold my hand? At least until the end? <laughs>